Thanks for tuning in to another physics lesson with Mr. M. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve for a Faraday's law of induction equation type problem. So let's go ahead and get into it. We have a coil here with 205 turns of wire, a total resistance of 23 ohms, and a cross-sectional area of 0.25 meters squared. And it's positioned with its plane perpendicular to the field of a powerful electromagnet. What average current is induced in the coil during the 0.25 seconds that the magnetic field drops from 1.6 teslas to 0 teslas? All right, so the equations that we're going to be using here are found to the right. This right here is Faraday's law. The uh, epsilon here represents the electromagnetic field. N represents the number of turns of the coil. Phi is your magnetic flux, and time is the time that the... Uh, induction was basically occurring, okay? We also have an equation specifically for magnetic flux. That's the magnetic field strength times the area times the cosine of the angle <clears throat> that it's directed towards. And then in this problem, we are going to be solving for the current. Current is the uh, electromagnetic field divided by the resistance. Now, electromagnetic field is in units of volts, um, so this is kind of like a play on Ohm's law. Now that we have that kind of discussed, let's go ahead and start listing our knowns and our unknowns. So our, our coil here has 205 turns of wire. That's going to be our capital N. We have a total resistance of 23 ohms. So that's going to be R. Our cross-sectional area of 0 0.25 meters squared. That's going to be capital A. All right, what else do we have? Okay, we have the uh, <clears throat> induction time, which is the 2.25 seconds. And then we have our change in the magnetic field, okay? So that's our capital B. We go from 1.6 Teslas to zero Teslas, okay? And then what are we trying to solve for here? You know, what average current is induced we technically don't know um, the current, and we technically don't know the EMF at this point either initially. All right, so before I start getting into just kind of plugging in some values, what I want to do is I actually want to uh, combine these two equations. Um, since uh, flux is in the Faraday's law equation, I know what flux is. Flux is the magnetic field strength times the area times the... Um, cosine of the angle. In this case, we don't have an angle. Theta, we, we could uh, add that here. We were not given an angle, so theta is zero. All right, so <clears throat> because phi equals this, all right, I'm going to substitute this for up here. However, it's the change in magnetic flux that is uh, kind of the value here in the numerator. And the only thing that is changing is our magnetic field strength. So I don't really have to worry about A or cosine. So I'm going to represent that in the equation. So epsilon is going to equal negative N times A times the cosine of theta times basically the change in B over the change in time. And so that is kind of how we're going to solve for epsilon here. <clears throat> so now we can start plugging in some values. So our electromagnetic field strength is going to be negative 205 times the 0.25. Cosine of 0 is, is 1, so we're really multiplying by 1 here, okay? Now, the change in B over the change in time. So we went, we dropped. So we're going from 1.6 to 0. So we are basically losing that amount. So that's going to be um, final minus initial. And that all happens in uh, the 0.25 seconds. All right, so at this point, we can plug this all in our calculator. So two oh. Uh, negative 205 times 0.25 times the cosine of 0 times basically negative 1.6 divided by 0.25. And so we get 328 volts for epsilon for our electromagnetic field. 
And once again, the question is asking, what is the average current here? So now we're going to start implementing our kind of version of Ohm's law where the current equals epsilon over the resistance. So our current is going to be the 328 volts divided by the 23 ohms of resistance. And so we get a final answer of basically 14.3 uh, volts. I'm sorry. 14.3 amps of current. All right. As always, thanks for tuning in. I hope this video has helped you solve for your own Faraday's Law problem.